All right, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the Authors Unite show. Today, I have Adri Kaiser with us. She is a transformational coach, international yoga teacher, and energy alchemist. She is also the founder of Enlightened Alchemy, designed to help you improve your health, build unstoppable confidence, and finally live the life of your dreams. So welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here with all of you today. Yes. Thank, thanks for coming on. Um, so to start, I, I always like to start from like the beginning. So like when you were younger, did you think that you would be, you know, doing this, like being a transformational coach, yoga teacher, energy alchemist, like, was there any vision of this or how did we get to this point? I love that question because, you know, I, when I was a little girl, I knew within my heart, like it was a deep calling of wanting to make a difference in people's life, probably, especially the underdog, because I saw myself as an underdog. Uh, I was abused as a child. I was told many times, you're not good enough. And I, when I moved to the U.S., I experienced racist remarks. So all of those painful memories and emotions, I buried them, trying to prove to myself that I, I was worthy, that I am good enough. So it didn't matter how much success I achieved in my life. It didn't matter that I went to law school for a few years in Venezuela. It didn't matter that I have traveled all over the world teaching yoga and retreats and doing motivational speaking and building a su successful career. All I could hear was, you're not good enough. So my journey particularly started from uh, years of chronic back pain for over a decade. And after trying so many different conventional treatments just to get temporary results, I realized that I needed to take charge of my not just my physical body, my physical pain, but I needed to address the mental and emotional aspects of myself. So I really came, it came to a moment where the pain was so intense, particularly this day, I'm playing with my son. He was at the time about seven or eight years old. And as I'm playing with him, all of a sudden, this flash of memories of me being abused as a child started to come in. And in that moment, as that happened, my entire back locked locked up so in that moment i finally realized that it was memories that had there been abused that were creating the physical pain yes the physical pain was very real i i remember going to this technique called a rusty and everybody's like oh you'll get three or two five sessions max and you're gonna be fine i was in session 25 and still having issues so right there i realized there's a connection between the mind, body, and emotions. So when I make the decision to change the narrative of the story, AKA, you're not good enough, and take charge of my health at the physical, mental, emotional, and even spiritual level, that's when everything came into place for me. So when people see me from back then when I was having intense pain to now, they're like, what did you do? How did you heal yourself? thinking that the answer is going to be simple like oh i just took this pill or i just did this and fixed me no it what it took me doing my inner work and facing my fears and changing those limiting beliefs in order for me to get to the other side of the coin mm -hmm. but interesting enough the reason i wanted to be a lawyer was to make a difference in people's life so when i moved to the u.s law school there and law school here completely different so it didn't none of my credits apply Thankfully, I'm doing what I'm meant to be doing. I just do it different. I'm not in a courtroom. I'm doing it from a place of walking my talk. My journey is something that helped me heal from the inside out. And I'm now blessed with the opportunity to have worked with people worldwide to give them the tools they need so they can also do what they're meant to be doing so they can live their best life. So I was very self-conscious about my accent. I didn't speak for months because when I, as I mentioned, when I moved to the U.S., I encountered racist remarks that led me to not speak for about several months, for several months. So I would never, ever, ever would have thought I would be speaking to you today or I would have been in global stages sharing my story in a language that's not my primary language. So something that was so self-conscious and made me feel so inadequate and, 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 and make me play small 
now it's one of my assets because having an accent, people tell me they love it. But second, now they have to pay attention. And third, well, I'm multilingual, so. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah no, it's true. I, it, well, in, in Miami, that's the one thing I struggle with is I don't speak Spanish. <laughs> it's, and honestly, the thing in Miami is there's more people that speak Spanish than English. Yes. Um, so, no, that's so cool. And that, I, that's why I love asking that question because when you think about it, it seems to me it's um, it's very common that like your your pain, your initial pain, you you went through that, but then what you did is you spun it around, and now it's literally your business, yes. right? So, and it's pretty crazy too when you think about because just logically, you wouldn't think that like a belief system could actually create back pain, but like that's so so just so I'm clear, you're actually saying that like there was nothing actually really wrong with your, but, but because of your mental, it was causing you like bodily pains. Is that, is that what it was? Well, so one thing to know, it's, it's a great question. And I love to answer it this way. Your belief becomes your reality. Your belief affect your emotions and your emotions will affect your biology. So also your belief manifest or affects your biology. So for me, being abused as a child, being told you're not good enough multiple times and having certain hardships and how we cope with pain is different. You know, all of us have experienced some type of pain in our life from heartbreak, loss, disappointment, failure, or even abuse. So for me, it was very then. For me, it was like, let me push harder. Let me try harder. Trying to prove to myself and all others that I was worthy. So emotions that are not fully experienced or expressed, emotions that are buried, emotions that you shut down or try to ignore, eventually begins to affect your fascia, your tissue, your muscles. So yes, my chronic back pain, even though it was very physical, and, and I will go to the chiropractor, get adjusted, and then here I am, again, with the pain or all these other different techniques, was when I realized the effect of, because when I was when I was abused as a child, I didn't go through life playing the victim. I didn't go through life thinking and relieving the abuse. Um, I completely erased it from my memory, so to speak. I kind of, it was there, but it wasn't there. So it wasn't until I brought it up to the surface again, and I was willing to feel the feelings. I couldn't talk about my abuse without crying or being angry, without having this knot in my throat. I could have this very physical reaction to it. And going through the process of working on myself, forgiveness, um, understanding that when I forgave my aunt for the abuse, I wasn't saying that what she did was okay. I was simply taking my power back. I was choosing to say what happened in the past is no longer keeping me attached, making me play small. I'm choosing to now feel empowered, learn the lessons, and move forward in life. One thing to mention, because I was doing an interview with somebody else, and it was a very amazing question she asked. She says, how the, ab the abuse, that you're, the physical abuse from your end, how did that uh, change the relationship with other women in your life? absolutely affected it. I didn't know it consciously, but guess what I was tracking? Because when people are abused, especially as a child, we think it is our fault. We think it's something we did wrong because we don't know any better. We have somebody of authority that's something that was supposed to protect us or, or love us, etc. And it's doing something that it doesn't, that we think we, it's our fault, right? So, and of course being told names and all these different stuff, I created a belief system within me saying you're not good enough as well. So I kept attracting relationships in my life, friendships that one way or another started well, but in my head I was like, be careful, you cannot trust her, that person is gonna hurt you, uh, whatever. So I had this self-imposed limitation, why? Because I believe so deeply in my subconscious mind that these type of relationships were going to happen. Like I couldn't, I will always expect 
without knowing again i'm not entering a friendship consciously saying oh nice to meet you yes please hurt me or walk all over me <laughs> no it was yeah. subconscious so it wasn't until i healed that that also my relationships with female other female or other figures of authority healed as well because i always even though I wanted to have this sisterhood, this friendship, this circle, I, all, I was with one foot in, one foot out. I was always guarded, like waiting to see what was going to happen. So yes, absolutely. Your belief system and your emotions will affect your biology. It will affect how you feel because the mind, body, and emotions are connected. So what affects one, it will affect the other two. So think of it as a triangle that when the three of them are working in, in their balance are working in harmony. So you experience happiness, uh, fulfillment, health, abundance, uh, healthy relationships, successful business. But when one is out of balance, it will affect your finances, your self-esteem, your confidence, your relationships, even your work. So take a moment here to, to think, okay, if I'm in a job that I love and people appreciate me, how do you think you feel physically? You're well, and you mentally, you're, you're confident and, and things are going well, et cetera. But what about if you're in a job where no matter what you do, people are constantly criticizing you, making fun of your weight or whatever, the way you look, that will affect everything in life. Even when you don't feel you're worthy, it will affect your finances because as, the moment you make money, something happens, that money goes out, that, that money goes out. So it's that belief system that affects everything we do as well. It's energy at the end. Yeah. I agree. And that, that's perfect segue because that was going to be my next question <laughs> is so energy alchemist, like what, I guess the question is like, somebody comes to you, what is the process that you bring them through? Is it like through coaching? And like, what's the like what's the desired end result typically? You can use a real example or maybe you can't name names, but. Yeah, uh, that, that definitely. You know, like I said, everything I do is holistic because it's based on my own experience of healing myself. When I was just working on the physical body, physical aspects, I will only get X amount of results and then come back to whatever I started or maybe made some progress, but then it, I didn't see long lasting results, right? So when I started incorporating mind, body, and emotions, the, everything clicked. Years ago, I, I say I came out of the spiritual closet. Something I didn't mention that growing up, my mom was into Ayurveda, metaphysics, crystals, macrobiotics, yoga, all these different things. And I remember telling myself, like, why can't she be normal? But now I'm doing the same thing she did back then. So for me, it was the combination of like I said, everything is energy. So when I work with my clients, I work at the physical, mental, emotional, even energetic levels. So I do energy work. I'm a Reiki master. I'm an Akashic Record practitioner. I do specific activations. So one thing leads to another. When somebody comes to me, let me give you an example. I remember Shelly. She was a client of mine. Shelly was, she was experiencing TMJ intense neck pain, back pain. She was not sleeping at night. She was depressed. And she kept going from doctor to doctor, trying to figure out what, what was going on. So she was taking medications that prescribed, and soon enough, medi more medications because the ones gave, them, gave her side effects and stuff. So one day, she calls me and says, Adri, can you help me? This is, she explained what I just explained to you. Can you please help me? I, I, I don't find, I don't feel like myself again. So in, we started to work together for about eight weeks, or that's when she started to see results. So we started to work together for the period of time. We changed some aspects of her diet. She started to take my online yoga classes and meditations. She, we started to do some coaching, um, and, you know, mindset stuff. Eight weeks into this process, she calls me one day and she says, you won't believe what happened today. I finally smiled. In that moment, it almost brings me to tears because we take that for granted. So for her was that within those eight weeks, her posture improved, her intense TMJ went away, her pain in the back and the neck and back decreased drastically. She smiled for the first time. She started to feel like herself again. And it was because during the process of working together, we did some energy work, 
that's changing, that's the alchemy. So I, I, I have so many certifications and that's why I call it enlightened alchemy method because I bring all these different tools into one place where I use whatever is needed at a specific time. So it's almost like going to, stepping into a supermarket where you're going to go and buy, I don't know, pineapple and all of a sudden you realize, oh, but I can buy this and I can buy that or I didn't know I needed this and that. So when I do the energy alchemy process, is to help you begin to break free from those uh, energy blocks that people have, those ancestral DNA stuff that we tend to carry, the souls we leave, really heal that inner child. And in addition to that, then move the body. Because if we do a lot of energy work and mindset, and we're not moving the body, the energy might just kind of move a little bit, but then get stuck again. So I really implement all the tools that I use personally to help me heal from the inside out and become the person I am today. So these are proven methods that I took and learned from to then bring to these people that, you know, they come to me for whatever, whatever reason. Some people come to me for yoga and all of a sudden they start getting more stuff. Some people come to me because they have a mindset issue or money issue. Some people, they, they come to me for different reasons. So, but they do get all the enlightened alchemy process, which is energy work, mindset, yoga, breath work. Uh, I don't know. No, that's awesome. It's honestly like, I mean, just yoga alone, I actually, uh, years ago, I lived with a guy who, um, he uh, ran a yoga studio. So I literally lived with him. So I was going like probably four times a week to yoga and it changed. Like I'm naturally very not flexible. So like when I was doing that every day, just like the way my body could move, like it was just so unbelievable. I need to start doing it again. I don't know why. I don't. Yeah. <laughs> um, you but, know, it's funny you say that because everybody's like, oh, when, especially during, you know, lockdown and all this stuff, people's like, oh, I haven't been practicing yoga. And I, they come back to me for the first time. It's like, oh, I miss this so much. I don't know why I didn't do it anymore or why I stopped. Yeah. But what I love about yoga, yoga was my entry point to help me really awaken to this new way of living. Uh, I started to practice yoga just to find relief from pain. But what I got from yoga was a better understanding of who I am, what I wanted to be, what were the sins that were holding me back. So yoga can give you all these physical benefits like sleep better, lose weight, strength, tone your body, improve your digestion, all this different stuff, which is fantastic. But it also goes deeper. And um, comes back to your question before about the belief system. There's a reason why you know, I've been teaching yoga for 16 years, uh, and there have been times when in class, students will cry towards the end of the class. And the reason they cry is not because they're hurt, it's because finally emotions or whatever, whether it's a mindful movement, the conscious breathing, the inspirational stuff or something, finally the stuff come up to the surface. One in particular person said to me, it's like, I just started to cry and I don't know why, but it feels so much better and so much lighter. She didn't know what she was crying, but it was, she was, she welcomed that because she knew it was a release of something that no longer served her. So yes, I'm a big fan of yoga for sure. Yeah, no, that's awesome. Um, so I see too in, the, in your background, uh, crystals, right? Or rocks and crystals. So I'm curious, like when I was in, um, when I lived in Encinitas in California, I had friends, uh, Reiki master. I have, I have a couple friends that do that. And, um, and also some of them would do like, um, what are those called? Like the, they would like put crystals all around and then they would uh, like a sound ceremony as well. Like they, so what my question to you is, is I feel like for a lot of people that uh, are not open to this type of thing, they think they're like, oh, it's just a rock. Like it's just a, but I, so I'm curious to you, like, what do you, feel or like what is the energetic thing that's happening from the crystals i'm curious yes um you know again everything is energy and what i love about yeah. crystals is that crystals have their own energy and the energy that the crystals have communicates or speaks the same language of our own energetic field so whether you believe in crystal healing or not 
I guarantee you that oftentimes you, when you find a crystal, you're like, oh, that's, even if you think, oh, that's pretty, that's, that might be perfect for my desk or whatever, that crystal in your body, your energetic body communicated, and that crystal is giving you exactly what you need. So what I love about crystals as well is that the event passes the conscious mind, just like essential oils, because I love to work with essential oils as well. So essential oils, is it, it, they're chemical natural compounds. They are extracted from flowers, seeds, barks, etc. Chemistry doesn't lie. So these chemical compounds enter your cells and begins to really create positive transformation. So with crystals, bypasses the conscious mind. So it goes straight to giving you exactly what you need and how you need it. I tell people that the crystals will, will pick you. I tend to choose can pick crystals for my clients and intuitively choose them for them. And the reason that happens is because I connect with, let's call it our higher selves. And when they receive these crystals, it's exactly what they needed. Why? Because sometimes, again, like I say, we have, let's call it limiting beliefs or we have blinders or we just concentrate on one thing. When are answers all over us, right, or around us. So the crystals, when they pick you, they will give you exactly what you need when you're ready to listen. When you do crystal healings, that can be as simple as placing crystals around you or you're holding a crystal in your pocket. Like I wear crystals all the time. Crystals have different, different usage. And unlike medication, let's say you take a, a medication for migraines and that's all it does. Or you take a medication for digestion, and that's all it does. Crystals, the same crystals have multiple uses. So it can give you, like one crystal can be very grounding, and for other people it can be more supportive, or it can be very protective. Other crystals are more energizing. So, um, yeah, I, I just, as I mentioned before, my mom used to have crystals. I never cared yeah. for them right I, I was just like okay whatever but it wasn't until again i came out of the spiritual closet and i embraced those, those intuitive gifts that all of us have it's just that we either decide to develop them more or work on on them more than others just like when you go to the gym and you do bicep curls you know you're strengthening those muscles the same thing happens with your intuition so when i begin to really develop that aspect or embrace that aspect in my life, that's when crystals came back in. It's almost like they're like, oh, you weren't ready, but now you're ready to, to start working with crystals. Not just for me and my family, but now sell them, but also work with clients using crystals or even infuse the crystal energy during my classes, my yoga classes or coaching sessions. And the transformations have been really remarkable. So for those people that don't believe Oh, that doesn't happen. Well, what's the worst case scenario? The placebo effect? Then I'll yeah. take it. Do you know? Yeah. I love that. I agree. Um, yeah, I always, I always kind of lay on the side of like believing is there's more benefit to believing than not. So whether it is true or not true, might as well believe it. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Um, cool. So I guess I'm curious about like your your actual schedule because obviously you practice what you preach so like you're more do you have like a morning routine like what's your what's your daily look like so that some of our listeners and even like me too um can put this into practice in in our own lives yes yeah, so in the morning i wake up and i like to just set a moment there like to give thanks it's like thank you for even in the moments where you're challenged, even when you're going through difficult times, even if you're struggling financially or with relationships or a job or you lost your job or whatever it is, even when things are going completely wrong, there's always something to be grateful for. Even if it's just to like, thank, thankfully the sun is up or it's raining or whatever. So spend, wake up and spend a few minutes in gratitude. You can say whatever it is you wanna say. And then I do an essential oil routine after a shower. One thing I would suggest for everybody that's easy to implement because it's just, it's for physical wellness, but it's also like a, like a ritual for uh, self-care is I drink a full glass of warm water or no warm water, but like room temperature water. And after that, I make what I call morning elixir. And a morning elixir is a warm cup of water with half or full fresh lemon squeeze, the juice of it. 
and then one tablespoon or cupful of apple cider vinegar. And I like to use the organic uh, with the mother uh, vinegar. Why is this so important? First of all, it helps to reduce inflammation. It helps to balance your pH levels in your body. So if the, the more acidic your body is, the more inflammation, aches, and pains you will have. The more balanced it is, then you experience better health. It, it's great to help you boost your digestive system and elimination system. And as I mentioned, it could be a ritual of self-care because when you do that, you can sit down and just look at, the, at your window and either do your gratitude prayer or, or, or give thanks or just simply almost like an act of meditation. You know, like Japanese do it with the, the drinking their green tea as a ceremony. You can make it that as well. I sometimes don't have time to make it a ceremony, but I do spend the time to just drink it and kind of get settled or grounded for the day ahead. Yeah. You know? um, I practice yoga not as often as I like, but practice yoga a few times a week. I also teach it obviously regularly. Yeah. And um, what else? What else do I do that can be helpful? I make sure I drink plenty of water. Uh, but movement. So one thing, one thing that's worth mentioning when I tell people meditation, they think that they have to sit down for an hour, and and that's going to be easy. The thing about meditation, it can be any form. It can be moving meditation, like you can go for a walk, spend time in nature. You can sit down and set a timer so you're not wondering, like, how much longer, how much longer? If you're brand new to meditation, get a guided meditation so you are listening to the person guide you through the process. Meditation can be swimming. It could be painting. The act of meditation is to really get to quiet the noise in your head. So it's, it's not about becoming fat free it's about when the thoughts come in you know it's almost like watching a movie you know mm -hmm. letting that turn into a story and go from one thought to the other it's just like clouds passing by you know so it could be the act of meditation could be something that feeds your soul it helps you to clear your mind reduce stress another thing that is important for people to realize is that please do not sleep with your electronics and before going to bed, I make sure at least an hour before I go to bed, I don't check emails, I don't check my phone, because all the blue light activates your brain. And then it's like almost like running a marathon or, 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 or doing 20 jumping jacks, something that, or drinking, well, my husband can drink coffee and fall asleep right away. But, you know, having something that gives you a ton of energy and that's like, okay, now I'm going to go to sleep. It takes time to unwind. So make sure you make a night routine where you can also give yourself to unwind, to unplug, to really set the intentions. Like once I started doing this, because our body knows, and once you create a habit, your body understands. Once I start doing this, that means I'm going to go to sleep. I have clients that said that Wednesday, I have private clients that come to me or we start a session or whatever, but they know there's a routine. And once they get into that routine, there's like my time begins. It's the time where we work together because it's, it's like repetition and it helps the body know and expect yeah. how to create results that are, or a practice or a routine that will help you keep the results you want. Yeah, and I think like starting is always the, I think the hardest part because once you actually feel the difference of this, you very rarely do you go back to the other way. <laughs> so. Yeah. Because um, even meditation, I love that you said that. There's a, there's one on YouTube that I use a lot. It's 15 minutes. You just type in Alan Watts guided meditation, and that's he he says it in that meditation exactly what you said. Of it's not about like not having thoughts. It's it's more about like allowing your thoughts to just like pass by and and watch them. Um, and yeah, like guided for me has, has been very useful because just complete silence. I mean, that is difficult. I think. It's for uh, all of us. If it was easy, we all be meditating and we'll be yeah. enlightening and we might not even be here. You know, the reason we're human yeah. beings, I mean, we're energetic beings having a human uh, reality. Yeah. So yeah. yes, if meditation was easy, we all be doing it, but it's doable and doesn't look this, for me, it's knowing that I have the freedom for my meditation to look differently every day. My meditation consists of practicing yoga. For me, that's my movie meditation. That's when I 
oh, I am plugged and I go in and breathe and move. So that's fantastic. Yeah, there are times where I don't practice yoga, but I do practice meditation for five minutes, a few minutes. So it's not about thinking it has to be this way and only this way. However, I will say to anybody studying, commit to a specific time of the day because that's gonna help you stay consistent. I remember when I first started my seated meditation, I was like, I'd be like, okay, I'm gonna meditate right now. The phone will ring, the doorbell will ring, or email is even to be responded right away. But that moment I said, no more, that can wait. I'm just gonna meditate for five minutes. That noise, all those excuses begin to come, like disappear. It's almost like once you make your mind up, mm -hmm. the universe comes conspires you to support you. So what people don't realize often is that at every second of our life we have a choice even though choosing is a choice mm -hmm. so we when we stop looking to the outside to feed our ins insights when we start stop looking for somebody to fix us for external things to make us happy or for external people to make us feel whole and worthy once we do that personal work when we decide you know what I deserve in investing in my health. I'm deserving of spending X amount of money on me to do A, B, C, or D, to learn more. I'm deserving of spending five minutes of my day meditating. I'm worthy of whatever, whatever. I decide today to make a change. That's when things happen. I cannot tell you how many people have reached out to me with um, mindset or negative beliefs around money. You know, uh, like they don't have well let me ask you this have you heard the phrase money doesn't grow on trees yeah mm -hmm. right so right there as a, i heard it, especially coming from latin american country you know where a lot of these things are beliefs that are learned behaviors are passed down from generations through generations so money beliefs sometimes are ours that we, we learn from past experiences in, in, in this moment, but some of them are passed down from our ancestors or cultural. So people have these money mindsets that prevents them from being abundant and having their financial wealth that they desire. But when the help comes, it's the same beliefs that stop them from getting the help. So meaning, I wanna learn how I can make more money. So here comes a course that tells them, improve your money mindset but they're like, oh, so much money, I don't want to spend that. So that same false belief that's preventing you from getting, you know, getting the money that you say you want, is also preventing you from getting the help that you need to do the yeah. inner work, to change the belief system. Same <laughs> with weight or relationships. So that's why I was saying before that your beliefs will change, will affect anything from your health to how much money you make, to the relationships you have, to everything because yeah. mind body emotions are connected and it's all energy that's what i think it's all it, energy it all comes back i couldn't agree more honestly you just laid the foundation i love it <laughs> that's awesome um so really i think uh, you know last thing i just if there's anything else that you want to share the floor is yours and then for for our listeners like let them know uh, website or wherever else they can connect with you that's best yeah i want to give them a couple of um actionable tools aside from doing okay. the morning elixir one of them next time let's, let's do this experiment and i want you guys and tyler i'm going to challenge you to reach out to me with these results uh, when you get a bill when you get an unexpected bill or when you get a bill or whatever even your credit card statement or stuff instead of being like oh my gosh you know i have to pay this what about if we say thank you so much because i have the opportunity or i have the money to pay for this or i'm grateful for this person that provided me with the service so instead of being like, like a bill oh my god i'm giving money away or i have to this is money that i didn't have or i'm struggling and now I have this bill that just happened out of the blue instead of being like that it's like let's say you went grocery shopping I'm happy this grocery store is open that I can get my groceries. I'm happy I have the means to afford this grocery. I'm happy that I'm paying my phone bill because with my phone is what I do business. So changing the, oh, I'm spending money or I'm losing money or I'm wasting money or whatever into seeing, giving thanks for the person providing you with the service or the facility 
support that, you're able to support a local business that's providing, you know, works or jobs for your community, et cetera. So I want to I wanna hear you guys. I want to challenge you to when that first deal comes or when that happens, even your tax. And again, I, I preach, I walk, <laughs> I <love it>. the <laughs> talk, walk the talk, right? So I just got a tax. Oh, yeah. I just, I just got hit with a tax. <laughs> I was like, oh, and then it's like, no, 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 no. This is good. That means last year I made money and this is good. This is, uh, I'm able to pay this or I'm, I'm grateful that I'm able to, whatever you want to say. Yeah. But even when you get your tax bill and you're, the first thing is like cringing, it's like turning around. I want to hear you guys yeah. see what the experiment is. The second scene is, I want to invite all of you to start a journal practice. And when I hear, when I say these people, it's like, oh, really? This is why. When you journal, you can journal every day, every few days, whatever. But when you journal, you're writing down your thoughts and emotions that you're experiencing on a regular basis. Why is this important? Because it brings you awareness. It's like being in a room that's dark, that's dirty, that's messy, but you don't see the mess and the dirt because the lights are out. In the moment, you become aware, meaning you turn on the lights, you can see the mess, you can see the dirt. So when you see, when you're journaling, and you can go back once a month or once a week and read what you're writing and notice patterns and notice what's happening. Because as human beings, we have about 70,000 thoughts per day, but only 10% of those are original thoughts, meaning 10% are repetitions of the thoughts we had the day before, the day before, the year before, stuff from ancestral DNA and all this different stuff. So once you become aware of what you're thinking constantly, therefore it's affecting your external reality, your relationship with what you're experiencing, then you can begin to make changes. It has also been scientifically proven that the brain is, um, is wired towards the negative. Let me explain. You may have 10 experiences today. Five of them are neutral four are positive, but one is negative. Let's say somebody left a bad review in your podcast or somebody mentioned something about whatever somebody's wearing or about job performance that day or their project. Doesn't matter that you got four positive things. You're gonna think about the negative thing over and over, probably when you go to bed and the first thing you, when you wake up in the morning because that's how our brains are hardwired towards that. So when you journal, and again, spending five minutes of your day journaling about gratitude, but also will help you, again, scientifically proven to improve yourself, uh, your wellness, your sense of self, to train your brain to now look towards the positive instead of the negative. Hence why I like to start my day with gratitude. And sometimes at night, I don't say every single night, but most nights, my husband and I talk at night, what are you grateful for today? What happened today that you're grateful for before we go to bed so we can, or before we fall asleep? So in that way we can then doze off in a positive state. So those are things that people can implement right away. The other one is um, I created a workbook that uh, for people, for my clients I work with, but when I do this type of talks, people really want to get access, access to them because it's simple. It's a, it's a PDF that can download for free that gives them some exercises so they can become aware of what are some of the limiting beliefs that they have. So then they can think about what is the next step for them to help them release those limiting beliefs. So because we all have them. Now they, they, the gift, the, the beauty of this is learning to now see them and then take action because if if we know that what we're doing is not in our best interest but we keep doing it that's madness right so we want to make sure a to understand why we do the what we do since you know especially when you know better because people come to me it's like adri why do i continue to to repeat these patterns even when i know better that's a limiting belief that mm -hmm. is the same action to this or inaction so again when you see oh, I noticed that I have a money ceiling, meaning that you make X amount of money and all of a sudden you start making a little more. But as you make some a little extra, 
you get an unexpected expense and then that extra money is gone. That's the money sitting right there. So when you become aware of that, oh, I'm noticing this pattern. Where is this belief system coming from? Is it mine? Is it something that was passed down through generations? What do I not do next? So that workbook is called from, it's called from limited to limitless. Find your bliss playbook. Because again, simple, easy. I believe that when you make things simple and easy, people will actually take advantage of it and do the work. But then it's not just becoming aware of the limiting belief, then it's taking action. Because by you just knowing that you have it, Yes, it's a big step, but then it's the other step that will help you get the result. So, and so again, uh, journal, uh, do the, the, the gratitude when you're paying a bill, yeah. <laughs> and then download the PDF if that you want. So those are three, three actionable steps that you can do right away. Awesome. And what, what is the website? They can go to adrikaiser.com okay. forward slash free dash gifts. Okay, perfect. And, and I think you have the link. Yeah, you, I, I may have sent, I think D sent you the link, but if not, I'll send it to you so you can put it in the notes. Too. Yeah, we'll put it in the notes for all the listeners as well. And thank you again for coming on. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure.